In this lab, we need to configure an IPsec VPN between customer router 1 and customer router 2, but we are using dynamic IP addresses. So the IP addresses of customer router 1 and customer router 2 can change. In the first step, we've been told to configure IP addresses on the customer routers using DHCP on the internet facing interface and static IP addresses on the internal interfaces. And then we need to configure a DHCP pool. So I'll configure customer router one first. So here's customer router one, show IP interface brief. At the moment, no IP addresses are configured on the router. All interfaces are shut down and no IP addresses have been configured. So interface gigabit 01, no shut, IP address DHCP. Interface gigabit 00, no shut, IP address 10111 slash 24 mask. So show IP interface brief. An IP address has been allocated to the router via DHCP, IP address is this, show IP route. We have a gateway of last resort set, static default route to 8.8.10.1. So can we ping cisco.com? We need to enable IP domain lookup. So try again, ping cisco.com, uh, that works. Can we trace to cisco.com? Uh, yes, we can. Traffic goes through the internet to get to cisco.com. So let's configure a DHCP pool. I'll specify an exclusion range of say the first 10 addresses, and then I'll create a pool called PC, specify a network of 10.1.1.0 with a slash 24 mask. Default gateway is gonna be 10.1.1.1. DNS server is going to be Google. So show IP DHCP binding, an IP address has been allocated to the Ubuntu client. So that looks good. I'll now configure customer router 2, and it's very much the same process. So interface gigabit 01, no shut IP address DHCP. Interface gigabit 00, no shut. IP address 10.1.2.1 slash 24 mask. IP domain lookup. Do ping cisco.com. That works. So IP DHCP excluded range 10.1.2.1 to 10.1.2.10. IP DHCP pool. Network 10.1.2.0 slash 24 mask, default router is 10.1.2.1. DNS server is Google. So I've configured the routers with IP addresses. They can ping cisco.com and I've configured DHCP pools on the customer routers. Now we need to enable NAT and configure an IPsec VPN between these two routers. Before I do that, let's confirm that the routers can ping each other. So ping customer router one, davidbomble.com, that works. So the router can ping itself and it can ping router two. That works because ISP router two is configured with DNS entries. And these are the IP addresses that were allocated to customer router one and customer router two. So again, on customer router one, show IP interface brief. That's the IP address of customer router one. Here's the IP address of customer router two, set to that. That's how the DNS server is configured. So customer router one can ping customer router one davidbomble.com and should be able to ping itself because of the name resolution. So we've got the basics working. 
let's configure NAT and a IPsec tunnel between customer router one and customer router two using dynamic IP addresses.